Hello everyone from Malmesbury Primary School and everyone who is watching this online. I am Andrew from The Abbey and I'm so excited about our assembly today. Our theme for this term is hope and we are thinking about Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 where God says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And we're going to be thinking about that word hope. And the way that we're going to be thinking about it is by looking at a story from the Bible. But first, let's play a quick game. Now, in this game, you are going to need to choose a number between one and 20. And if you get the number exact or if you get the number closer than anyone else who's also choosing a number in your home, then you are the winner. And I'll explain what the game is in a moment. But first, I'm going to need a few things to help me. Aha, this is it. OK, so we're going to see how many of these cotton wool balls I can get into this plastic bowl. So I'm going to put them on my head. I've got my spoon. OK, let's do, um, let's start in three. One, two, three. Let's go. other people in your house. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Oh, okay. Let's see, how many did I get? Oh, I got, okay, so in the bowl, one, two, three, four, five five in total so if you got five we were the closest to five then well done now the reason why i chose um cotton wool balls is because they remind me of sheep and in our bible story today we are going to be thinking about someone who was a shepherd we're going to be thinking about david david went on to become king but before he was king he looked after his father's sheep and he did something rather amazing. Let's hear the story of David and Goliath and we're actually going to be hearing it from um, being read to us from the Jesus Storybook Bible. God's people had some scary enemies but the Philistines were the scariest of them all and now the Philistines had come to fight them. The Philistines had a secret weapon called Goliath. Goliath was a terrifying soldier and worst of all a giant, a giant so strong and so tall and so scary that no one had ever been able to fight him and live to tell the tale. So there they were, the Philistines standing on top of one hill, God's people standing on top of the other. Every day Goliath came out and shouted, Send your best soldier to fight me. If he wins, we will be your slaves. But if I win, you will be our slaves. No one spoke. No one moved. Chickens! Goliath bellowed. Your God can't save you. I'll rip your heads off and have you on toast. And he laughed his terrible laugh. Ha 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 ha! It boomed, echoing horribly around and around the dry, dry valley. God's people froze with fear. They knew if someone didn't do something quick, if someone didn't save them, but God would do something. He would send someone to save them. David's older brothers were soldiers in the army. One day, when David brought his brothers their lunches, he saw Goliath and he saw how scared everyone was. Don't be afraid, David said. I'll fight him for you. You're only a little shepherd boy, the king said, and Goliath is a great soldier. How will you fight him? God will help me, David said. 
David picked out five smooth stones from the stream. One, two, three, four, five. Took his slingshot and walked towards Goliath. Step, step, step. Goliath walked towards David. Thud, thud, thud. You! Goliath peered down at the small boy. I'm little, David shouted up to him, but God is great. Goliath laughed an even terribler laugh than usual. <laughs> it went. With just one swing of his giant sword, Goliath could finish the boy off. But David kept going. It isn't how strong you are or how many swords and spears you have that will save you. It is God who saves you. This is God's battle and God always wins his battles. David put a stone in his sling, swung it round and let it go. The little stone flew whiz like a bullet through the air and struck Goliath thud right between the eyes. Goliath stopped laughing. He stumbled and staggered and crash fell dead. When the Philistines saw Goliath was dead, they ran away. And when God's people saw them running away, they cheered. God had saved his people. David was a hero. Many years later, God would send his people another young hero to fight for them and to save them. But this hero would fight the greatest battle the world has ever known. David is such an inspiring young person. Everyone else is afraid and fearful of Goliath. And yet David, who's put his hope in God, has this inner strength, this inner ability to face the challenges um, that he comes across. And he's got this giant challenge of Goliath. And even though his brothers are afraid and, and actually they speak down to him, even though the, 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 the king um, doesn't feel that he's up to it, actually David has this inner confidence that comes from his hope being in God. And I was thinking, what about an example of a young person who's put their hope in God and has been able to face um, their own challenges, their own Goliaths? And I thought of someone called Jonathan Bryan. Jonathan is a teenager. He doesn't live too far from here. And he's someone who's put his hope in God. His faith is the most important part of his life. And Jonathan has many challenges. He has cerebral palsy, which means that he's not able to move his arms and his legs. He's not able to speak. And it wasn't until he was nine years old with the use, with the use of a special spelling board that he was able to clearly communicate what he wanted to say. And on this spelling board, he's able to use his eyes um, like a finger pointing to the letters to spell out exactly what he wants to say. And he's gone on to write a book. And the book is called I Can Write. It's an, an inspiring story about his journey, his life so far. He's not only a writer, he's also a poet. He's also a campaigner for all children to be able to be given the opportunity to learn to read and write whatever um, disability they may have. Jonathan has also um, been part of a CBBC documentary called My Life, and I'm going to put a, a, um, the, the website address so you can watch that if you'd like to at the end of this assembly. And I got in touch with Jonathan um, as I was kind of thinking about this assembly and I asked him, well, you know, what does the story of David and Goliath mean to him? And he emailed back and, uh, and I wanted to read to you what he um, sent to us. Um, for this assembly. So these are Jonathan's words. In this story, the people David comes across all look at his outward appearance and define him by his age. His brothers get cross and irritated by their little brother coming to see the battle that, that only they are old enough to fight in. King Saul says David is only a young man, and tells him he can't possibly fight Goliath. And Goliath thinks David is a small boy who should be playing fetch with the dog. But David knew that God 
could use the skills he had given him and he trusted God. This Mental Health Week, it's important we listen to who God says we are rather than what others may think of us. God says we are his loved children. When we believe that and trust God, it's amazing what can be done despite what people look more despite what people looking at outward appearances think is possible. If you saw me in the street, you would see a small young man in a wheelchair and you might make some assumptions based on that. But never think you can know what someone can do by just looking at them. Because when we listen to who God says we are, anything is possible. And so a big thank you to, to Jonathan for sending that in um, for us. What an encouraging um, message for each one of us. Let's take a moment to pray. And if you'd want to uh, agree with my prayer and make it your own, then do say amen at the end. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you have good plans for us. Plans to give us a hope and a future. We thank you for David and the courage that he showed when he faced Goliath. We thank you for Jonathan and the courage and the faith that he has and the inspiration that he is. And we pray for each one of us that you would help us to be strong and to be brave and to be full of hope. Amen. We're going to finish by um, listening to a song, and it's a song about David. I think it might be new um, to most of you, but do have a listen. See if you can sing along. Maybe see if you can come up with some actions. And when it gets to the bit in the song that says slingshot, why not have a go at swinging your own slingshot around your head? But have a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope you enjoy this song. You give me strength, you give me courage to face the day